Greetings, unsettled souls! Sam I.B. Deganji doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. Alright guys, um, a little bit of an update. Obviously, I have the studio up again. I, I'm not happy with the lighting. It's it's real shadowy and glitchy, but it'll work for the time being. The most important thing is, as you can see, Fact Cam is back. Um, the people were asking if I had uh, some of the... This is really shadowy. I don't like the lighting. Christelle was so good at it. <laughs> she really was. Um... The whole setup of the studio, everything, people have wanted to know what some of the sources I've been using are. And when I list the sources in the description, a lot of times that will only further trigger spam bots and it opens yourself up for shadow banning if certain people don't like what you're posting. So in that aspect, I have gone ahead and gone with fact cam so that you can see uh, everything that I see. And uh, there's a hint, that's actually the cartoon that I had uh, conjured up there. All right, guys, we're going to get started. As you, in case you don't know, the Dumb Cap of the Month um, is the biggest collection of dumdies that I can find. Each and every month, I bring them to you, and I mail out the Dumb Cap of the Month, which you're going to see, as well as the certificate. And, of course, leading up to it, we have a few of the dumdy stories, which... We're, as I go through the month, I find these stupid things, and I think to myself, that's that could be the dumbest thing of the month. And as it goes, then I try to collect what the dumbest story I have is, and of course, that's the one I want to bring you. And I think it's pretty safe to say that I've done so. Um, we have three before the big dumb though. Insane video of children being paraded and tipped at a drag show causes uproar. RT. Now, before I go into this, I wish to be completely open for those of you who, for whatever reason, may not know me or my past or the show or anything like that. I have and still do a couple nights a week DJ. Sometimes that DJing takes place in an adult establishment. Do you know who comes into adult establishments? Shazam, Sparky! Adults! What people do who are above the age of 18 is one thing. To have children paraded around in a sexual atmosphere where people are tipping them for the sole purpose of the fact that those children are sexual, that is a series of events that sounds so inside that you don't even, if you're me, want to report on them and say them out loud. Hence the reason that they're on the Delft Cap of the Month Award. Listen to, look at these pictures. These are, these are prepubescent kids being told to completely question who they are for the sake of a leftist agenda that wants to continue with the deconstruction of everything that's made America great. It's that simple, friends. Footage from a drag show in Los Angeles is causing uproar, it says, on social media as it shows children posing for the crowd and being tipped cash. Why in the hell do these people effing little bitty kids... All right. Vulgarity is on the way because I can't censor this without sounding like an idiot. So if you don't want, if you don't like vulgarity, you've been warned, skip ahead 10 seconds. Why in the hell do these people have these fucking little bitty ass kids up on this fucking drag show? The unidentified person in the video says before a couple of young girls are brought onto the stage, the person filming it continues. It notes that it is nearly midnight. An adult drag performer can be seen encouraging the kids to take cash tips from the audience as they direct the children in poses and take them down the catwalk. 
Teaching children sexual poses while instructing them to question their gender when the thought, of course, has never crossed their mind. Why in the hell these people got these fucking little bitty ass kids and they got this fucking drag to y'all? But it's 1140 at night. These people have children in a fucking drag show in LA on a bazooka set. Telling her, get her fucking money. Look at this fucking bullshit. Look at this bullshit now. Look, look, they give her fucking money, y'all. Little girls now. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. And fucking throw my money at me, little girl. If it is drag queen, do we even know if they are little girls? The user who posted the video, podcaster Lindsay Platoshin, followed up her tweet with a YouTube investigative piece on the trend of underage performers earning money at adult drag show, the hot topic in recent years and one that has been wrapped in a large debate about gender identity. Um, there have been times in my life when I have had to smuggle underage musicians into a club to play a show. It happened when uh, DJ and DJ Aram and I were affiliated with one another. It happened with The Creeper. Uh, many of you have seen the video that I posted, the documentary, where we go to the Moonville Tunnel, or we've been to Helltown, we do ghost hunting shows. Um, I had to sneak him into shows when he was under 18. Um, I dated a girl who was under 21, I had to smuggle her drinks. I get that. So you have to smuggle a, a kid into the, the show to play guitar when he didn't drink anything. I, I did that with an 18-year-old, not a 16-year-old. Um, what the hell? You'd be smuggled in to play guitar, but you can just roam mosey right on in if you're a, a kid being instructed by some freak to take money off the floor. And I'm sorry, I don't care what your sexual affiliation is, I'm pretty libertarian. But if you're instructing kids to do it, you're a freak. Critics online have expressed shock at the video. I would hope so. You can read them in the RT article. When some Twitter users defended the drag queens shows in general, saying many performers would balk at the idea of using children in the acts, Plato should push back saying, now is not the time to be ignorant. The fact is it happened. It has been happening. And no one is saying anything. Now is not the time to remain ignorant with our heads down making random claims about others are innocent. It's entirely not the point. The point is that um, I remember when I was growing up, there were a lot of people who were saying that you know, Ozzy Osbourne was going to be the death of us. That you know, Judas Priest was going to be the death of us. Whatever, whatever. And I was very happy uh, at first. I've told this story on air before, so I'll make it quick. Uh, growing up, I was absolutely infatuated, addicted to all things heavy metal. Still do. Uh, and, you know, I like industrial music, techno, a lot of different things. But what alarmed uh, my father, particularly, was my love of heavy metal and punk. And for a while, it was, no, you may not listen to it. And then he became a little bit wiser and understood that my friends were listening to it. So I was listening to it anyway. He had two choices. He could either pretend that he somehow had this great control over me and I could never go to any of my friend's house again as long as I live because they might listen to something that is dangerous. Or he could instruct me that, hey, Black Sabbath, they're named after a movie. This is fiction, yada, yada, yada. We have a dumbed down generation that it's not capable of doing that. They don't have the proper functioning to barely get through life on a day-to-day -day basis themselves, which is why so many of you watch shows like this, because we highlight the stupidity as well as make fun of it. And I, I know that the show is normally a little more jovial, and the next, the next topic is going to be, and the winner this month isn't even political, but if we don't point out the fact that we don't have the ability 
to tell our children that there are dangerous things in the world and perhaps they are going to be exposed to it and perhaps there isn't a way we can stop it, but to encourage it and to not tell them the way that things normally run and to consider alternative lifestyles, which should be legal. I don't think anybody should be harassed for anything. But to, to, to teach that to children as the new norm to be accepted is a dangerous concept. It has been a dangerous concept in every single society it's ever been tried in. We have seen it with the fall of Rome. We have seen it with culture after culture after culture that has done this. And now it's the American culture that is doing it. And that's why you've heard about it on the Dunce Cap of the Month award show where stupidity is exposed. If you'd like to donate, you can do so at the correct views of hotmail.com via PayPal. Guys, Vice, how about this? Time Mark cuts his own head off in hopes of reincarnation as a higher being. The act has shocked the Buddhist community, which said it did not align with teachings. Well, I imagine not, because if there were very many of them that were in favor of this, then they probably wouldn't have very many Buddhists. An elderly Thai monk decapitated himself, a la Alice Cooper, with a homemade device in a grisly death aimed at reincarnating in a higher being. Well, he might be a head shorter. Uh, an official confirmed to Vice News on Wednesday. Um, the Extreme Act was, ta was shaken, the Buddhist community and sparked an investigation. Well, they didn't investigate. The man cut his head off so he wouldn't have to come back as a cockroach or a Democrat. Uh, Damakin Waga Parecha rose before dawn on the morning of April 15th. If you don't like how I pronounced it, you can do it yourself. At uh, the sleepy temple in northern Thailand where his followers helped him prepare for the macabre ritual, which was finished by sunrise. How polite of him. He apparently sacrificed his life saying that it would bring him merit, and that he would come back as a higher being, a being or even a Buddha. But the incident has left a wave of shock and sadness within Buddhist-majority Thailand. Prominent monks have rejected it, and, uh, you know, it, 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 it was his personal belief. They're saying that's not what monks believe. And let me tell you something. Anytime a disaster happens within a minority community, we hear that that's not the norm. But then if a cop shoots somebody, we hear that that is all cops. So, of course it's not the norm. But the point is, there are people that take things to that extreme. And, you know, who knows? Maybe he won't be reincarnated as somebody who's you know, unloved or abandoned or something. So more power to him. Who knows? Two stories left. One of them is the Dunce Camp of the Month Award winner, and this one is not. The New York Post, although it was close. AOC, one of the squad blames racial injustice for the climate crisis. Now, this is a double dumdy here, and I sent this ridiculous hoochie uh, dunce cap before, so I don't want to overdo it. That's one of the reasons she didn't get it, but this is, a, this is definitely a double dumdy situation. First of all, we have proved that man is not warming the planet. Man has no role in the warming of the planet, and we can see this through a number of issues. The easiest way is to follow the logic and the work of the 500 separate scientists who signed a letter the day that Greta Thunberg, don't drop the fun fun, the day that uh, Greta Thunberg spoke, 500 reputable scientists, of which she is not, by the way, wrote a letter to the United Nations explaining how man really was not creating any kind of a climate emergency at all. So we know that man is not warming the planet based on the best scientific minds in the world, 500 of them no less. Um, one of the co-founders of the Weather Channel also found this logic. The writings of Lord Martin lay out clearly how man is not warming the planet. Uh, climate gate shows how they worked very hard to lie about man's effect and man's role in the warm, supposed warming of the planet. So not only is she talking about something that has been openly debunked for the good of her party and the socialist takeover of the country, which was the only reason you would push provable bunk science to a dumbed-down nation who is dumb enough to allow their children to dance for tips in a strip club, but furthermore... Racial injustice, the white privilege, the, the, the dreaded white privilege 
There is no white privilege. White privilege is a divisive tactic thought up by those who want to keep everyone at each other's throat. Plain and simple. And that's, we've laid that out on this show a million times. So, for, for, so using a, a fake idea to say it's causing another fake idea definitely lands you on the don't cap of the bumper board show. Representative Alec Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is blaming a racial injustice for the climate crisis. That's like saying she blamed the Easter Bunny for the Tooth Fairy. The climate crisis, the Tooth Fairy, is a crisis born of injustice, and it is a crisis born of the pursuit of profit for any and all human and ecological costs, the New York Democrats said on Tuesday as she pushed the Green New Deal. Now, never mind the fact that She's going to go home, and she's going to turn the air on. She has heat. She's showing her new garbage disposal run with electricity. They want to sell you this idea that it's going to be fixed with windmills. Well, we saw what happened there. One of the dunce cap, uh, the dunce cap of the month for February went to the uh, ridiculous governor in Texas, who told residents to boil their water when they had no power because the windmills froze. Why did the windmills freeze? Because you cannot rely on wind to do the job of oil, and it's safe to use oil because oil is not warming the planet. Now, it, it might be giving us lung cancer or something, but so do nuclear power plants, which they also push. Uh, the move towards clean energy is not a bad idea, but to push it with the way that they were doing it based on a uh, hierarchy of lies is quite dangerous. She goes on, uh, which means that we must recognize in legislation and that the trampling of indigenous rights is a cause of climate change, is a cause of climate change. That the trampling of racial injustice is a cause of climate change because we are allowing people to deny ourselves human rights and deny people the right to health care, the right to housing and education, she said in front of the Capitol. So climate change is now tied to the right of health care. So if you, if you don't warm the planet, then magically children are going to be given health care. And if you use less electricity, and then we can make sure that everyone is educated. Because a lack of energy use leads to higher education. At least if you're on the Dunce Capital Month Award show. Which leads us to what? You know what that leads us to, friends. It leads us to the winner. <laughs> Hi guys, so what is the Dunce Cap of the Month Award winner? I found it myself, friends. Do you know, let me tell you a story. I went to fuel up my car at the local Circle K. It is a convenience store here in Ohio, Circle K. It used to be a dairy mart. Circle K is a stupid name anyway. Uh, I, I, I don't mind the, the, the convenience store. It's good enough. It, they're expensive. I think vitamin water is really expensive now, but whatever. I go in there, I grab my coffee, yada yada. And then I notice something on the counter. Something that I'd seen a million times, which you're seeing now, but it takes a minute to realize just what kind of level of stupidity we're dealing with here. I'm not, I'll, I'll, I filmed this for a reason. The fact can. Listen. They literally have posted the recipe to make ice coffee. And on top of that, wow. But granted, the ice coffee machine may have been put in afterwards, but they had to give you a recipe to make ice coffee. A recipe for iced coffee is literally gorilla glued to the counter of Circle K. Fill the cup from the ice machine. 
place under the dispenser and hold the button. Release the button when it is full. This is the recipe for iced coffee. And there's an iced coffee machine right beside it, which, you know, may not have been there when this was there. But the point is, they didn't take it down when it was. Second of all, you need a recipe for iced coffee. I mean, if, if you're this stupid, you must have your kids in a drag show. Here's the hat that they're being sent. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award. And here's what I wrote. You posted on your counter a recipe for iced coffee. No more needs to be said. You won the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. It should have been you've won. I'll fix it before I get my own Dunce Cap. The Dunce right here. D-U-N-C-E. In a, it's scented markers. I don't know if they ever know this. All right, my first guy. Notice he has hot coffee in his hand. It even says iced coffee. I took the extra time on this one. Anyway, he's saying, I don't know how I could have made this with no instructions. I add ice, you say? Logic. Um, I'm going to save the, the last part. Can I get that recipe? And last but not least, Juan Valdez. You guys remember Juan Valdez, the hit coffee? Remember the comedian? And Juan Valdez and his trusty goat. It was actually a donkey. I drew a pretty good donkey, and he's furious. Why is he furious? Juan Valdez just shot himself. Now, I am mailing this to Circle K headquarters, and that costs money. Taking the time to put this show together, research. I don't make a penny off any of that if you don't donate which you can do at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. The money you give to me, I put towards a better show, and I hope you've enjoyed the one that you've seen, friends. Good night. God bless.